In this lesson, we're going to look at playing animations with buttons. So we're going to create a movie symbol and we're going to animate that movie symbol and then we're going to learn how to make that symbol play with a button. This is quite a complex subject, so you're going to probably want to watch this video a few times um, just to kind of get the drift just a bit. As for always, I'll try and keep the steps as minimal as possible. So the first thing, we're going to start with a ready created scene, which is three scenes and a next button. Then we're going to create a movie clip on scene one. Now it's important to note at this point that the movie clip will only play on scene one, and that's very deliberate. After we've created the movie clip, we're going to animate it and then we're going to add the play button just so we can play it when we want to. And then we're going to test the scene. We'll, we'll kind of leave it like that. So the good thing about movie clips is because they have nested timelines, your overall scene can remain quite clean and uncluttered and let the animations take take care of themselves on their own timeline. Um, so that's why we're going to look at this right now. So when you finally build your final app, you'll kind of you'll be able to use these techniques. So I've gone ahead of time and I've created a folder called Lesson 3 Animation Playing Buttons and I've just created the animation buttons um, animation document here, Adobe Animate document here um, and we're ready to go. So what's on this layer so far? So I've created my actions and all my actions, if I press F9, on my actions I've got this stop button just like we did in Lesson 1, so they've all got this stop button and then on the next button here, if I go back to Scene 1, I've done this go to and play. So nice and simple, keeping it very, very simple. I've also gone ahead of time and created all, all the free scenes that I need. So I've got my front page scene, I've got my page one scene, I've got my page two, and I've just labeled them up here, just give them a name, just so we can control the flow of it. So the next button, all this does is just literally goes to the next. So there's no keyframes for it, it just goes all the way through. So if we just play that now, so press control, enter, and you'll see exactly how this works. No different than, than lesson one. So we're on the front page, we press next, we're on page two, we press next, page one, we're on page two, and then we're back to home. Nice and simple, nothing too complex there. So go ahead now and get that inputted. And don't forget to lock them, okay? Because we're gonna start, we're gonna create another layer, and we really don't wanna mess up any of this because this is our this is our structure. So the next thing we need is another layer, and we're gonna pull this to the bottom, and we're gonna call it animations. Now the idea with this is that we're going to have multiple animation clips. So the extension task is you're going to actually create three um, animation movie clips and make them work with their own button. So I'm just going to create one here on this frame here. So in order to make sure that this movie clip doesn't go into the next one, all we're going to do is we're going to create some keyframes. So I'm going to create a keyframe here, so it definitely won't go onto there. And I'm going to create a keyframe here, um, insert keyframe here, so it doesn't go onto this one. So the actual animation will only appear on these ones here, which is absolutely fine, absolutely fantastic. So we're going to keep this simple. The first animation is literally just going to be a ball that whizzes off the page. So I've got this oval, and I'm just going to create it. Go back to my black arrow tool, and now let's just select it. Now, the most important thing you'll notice that it's just happening in scene one. So when I click off of scene one, it's gone. So come back to here. Let's make sure we select everything that we need and then right click and we're going to convert it to symbol. So the symbol we need for this is going to be a movie clip and we're going to call this animation one. Okay, no spaces, just animation one. We're going to press okay. The next thing we're going to want to do is just give it an instance name as well. So we're going to call this animation one as well. Um, there's no space there, press enter. So now we have our ball. And ordinarily, what you'd do is you'd create your animation here and it would be fine. But if you want really long, complex animations, you can do that. And what you'll know is that this will stop on this frame, okay? So it won't do anything. So we've got complete control. It won't move on. But we can play this animation even though it's stuck on frame one, which is absolutely exactly what we need for our app. So let's double click on it. And let's create an animation that is, let's make it... 45 frames long, so it's, it's almost as long as our whole app. So we're going to insert a frame. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click and I'm going to create a classic tween. Now classic tween works almost identical to motion tween, apart from you don't need to convert it to a symbol. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to move my playhead and I'm just going to whiz this off the stage. Nice and simple. The next thing I'm going to do is on this first frame, I'm just going to create 
um, a stop action. So press F9, we'll come up to Windows, and go down to the Actions tab, um, hit the Snippet Tool icon here, these two arrows, and HTML5 Canvas, Timeline, and then we just want the stop action, okay? Because we don't want it to start playing until we press the button. So stop at this frame, um, which is absolutely great. So if we test our whole app now, so go back to the scene, um, press Control S to save your app, and then press Control Enter to run it. Now what we should notice is that nothing happens. It's completely stuck. The animation that we just created doesn't work. It's, it stays still, and this also stays still um, until I press the button. So let's just come back to it and make sure that's the same. Now on the pass through, the animation will work, um, and then it will stop once it gets to the other end, but, but that's just a little glitch that we can fix if we need to. So come back to the timeline. Let's go back into our animation. Now we need to create a button. So if we call this layer here animation, and then we can lock that, and we'll lock the actions as well, and then we'll press this to get another layer, and this time we'll call it button. Okay, so we've got it all, let's be more precise and call it play button. Okay, because we're just gonna have one button, it's just gonna play. So on this first frame, let's create our usual rectangle. And let's create a bit of text. Now make sure we're on the right layer. Yeah. Fantastic. Now let's create a bit of text and we'll just say play. Now it's the same color as my background, so it won't show up. So let's just change that color. Um, let's make it red. <laughs> Always using pretty colors, that's what I like. So here we go. So we've done that. Now let's convert it to a symbol. So select everything, right click, convert to symbol. The symbol we want is a play button. And the movie clip is not the one we want. We want it to be actual button. And then we press OK. Once again, we need to change the instance name. So we say play button and then press enter. And now we're just going to add that same script we added before. So if we press F9, we're on frame one, and then we come to snippets, and then the one we want is HTML5 canvases, timeline navigation, and click to go to frame and play. So that is all of our steps. Oh, we just need to get rid of that five. Do not want that five. We don't need to put anything in here either because it's just related, this button here is just related to this timeline, so there doesn't need to be anything in there. So that is it. Um, you're probably going to need to watch that a few times just to kind of get the hang of it, but let me just show you that's worked. So go back to the main scene, and if you notice, we go to frame 20, and this is the good thing. We've created the animation. It has two or three layers, but it hasn't added any more depth or, or complexity to our actual timeline, which is great. So all of our animations are just going to be on one. So when you create your next animation, you'll put it here, and your next animation, you'll put it here, and it always remains clean and simple. So here it is, and if I want to edit it, I can just double click on it, I'd come in, I could edit it, I could have more layers, I could have more complex stuff going on, come back to my scene, I'll be good to go. So, Control S to save, and then Control Enter, and let's see if all that worked. So if I press next, it'll obviously go off to page one and page two, but it's this play button that I want, so when I press play, hopefully, this will whiz across the stage and then come and sit back here, um, without it moving to the play button, without it moving from the front page. And remember, this main timeline is frozen. So it's frozen on frame one. So this is the clever stuff. And there you go. And then it stops. And if you want to play again, you can play again. Um, so as you can imagine, there's some really cool stuff you can do there. And then if we press next, it obviously takes us to the next scene. And if you had your extra animation, so if you're going to do the extension task, you can put another animation here. And then you can press next and you can put another animation there. Um, so I do want a screencast of this, so I want you to actually screencast you pressing the play button, pressing through the next, and show me what's there. You're only going to get the free if you manage to complete this, okay, and manage to get this animation in. So give it your best shot, and I'll see you in the next lesson.